the, the phase two effort, what you saw in the previous video was the phase one and phase one B. And most of this all happened in the last year or so. So here we are, uh, the Flower, Flower Glen facility upstairs. And uh, this was the beginning of the 11 minute endurance flight. And the, the aircraft there is actually the same aircraft as this Nano Homing Group. This was before it was rearranged um, to fit with the um, Hummingbird body. So actually all the actuators and the propulsion system, the um, uh, mechanisms are all the same that are in here. You can tell even at that point, which was recent, it didn't look like it could be a Hummingbird. But, um, so this is uh, aerobatic maneuver. So here it did an autonomous uh, 360 degree lateral flip, and all I did was hit a button, and Carl Klingbeil, our chief engineer, did the programming to facilitate that maneuver, so it gave it a, uh, a very hard roll command, and did a full 360 degree rotation, and recovered, and all I had to do was hit a button. So here we are the first time with the hummingbird body, and I'm just trying to do some precision hovering. So this is when it really started looking uh, like magic because we had the bird body on there and, and really looked some you know fairly realistic. So we were we were pretty happy. I try not to grin too much on camera. I don't know we've got a professional, but we were just ecstatic at this point. And here you can see the uh, prototype ground station. I'm holding the controller, which has the the uh, LCD display with the video, and then the tripod has the uh, radio system hub on it with the antennas. And at this point, I was able to hover in a very tight spot. Um, this was an interesting flight. So here it is without the landing skids. And this is the, kind of the most realistic version. And if you look at it closely, you can kind of see some wiggle. You can see through the, the bird body, you can, you can see a little bit of uh, wiggle in the flight control mechanism. And that's part of the high speed controls that are that are happening real time that I don't have to worry about that the onboard control system is working out. All I'm doing is saying kind of fly forward, fly backwards, sideways, left and right. So it's pretty simple. And I can take my hand off it long enough to bring it in and um, catch it. So here it is outdoors. This is one of the very first outdoor flights, again with the bird body. In the upper left hand corner you can see the the, the first video imagery from the aircraft, and it's a little bit crude. Um, this was the first implementation with a video camera. When you put a, a video camera system on UAV, it, there's a lot of fine tuning with um, the conditioning of the power and the signal and the optics. So this was the first, the first go. And if you notice at the bottom of the uh, inset window of the video, you can see the wingtips come into to view because the video camera is, is just in the neck of the uh, the bird, and it can pick up the wings when they're out in front. And since DARPA was interested in flying indoors and up close uh, to the outside of the building, I wanted to demonstrate that. So flew it outdoors and then hovered it, lined it up with this doorway, and now I'm flying it indoors. And you can see the video on the upper left. That's the Flower Glen uh, facility where uh, we did the nano research. And um, so here we're I'm turning, controlling it to rotate it around and fly back out. And, um, it's a prototype system. That's as best we could do to simulate that mission that we showed you in the first video with the Anna 